the, organize, the organizers for inviting me to be part of this amazing celebration, both uh, friendly and scientifically. And uh, so I understand tomorrow is the, the praising of Dude Eduardo's birthday, right? So I haven't prepared anything. Not, not my embarrassing pictures. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the phase diagram for the extended Hubbard model on the square lattice and uh, my collaborators without whom the, the paper would, the, the work wouldn't have been done, uh, Sebastian, who was a PhD student, and Nathanael, the chair. And uh, so let's start with the outline. And uh, so we're going to talk about the extended Hubbard model. I'm going to just uh, review a few things. And uh, then we're going to make a case for attractive interactions. Then we're going to talk about the quantum Monte Carlo and the minus sign problem and results and conclusions. Oops, need to do, it's not synchronized. Which one, this one here? This one here. Oops, not there. This one. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, so if we go back 60 years ago, and uh, in this beautiful paper by, by John Hubbard, and who's here, he derived from first principles, from the interactions, he derived this uh, second quantized Hamiltonian, which you probably have seen. And normally what we call the Hubbard model goes up to U, which is the on-site interaction. So I recall that originally U and V are Coulomb terms. So they are, in these units, they are positive. So this is the idea of uh, repulsion. So they repel either if they are on the same site or they repel if they are separate. So in this second quantized form, you pay a price of, uh, for localizing. So if you put two spins on two fermions on the same site, you pay U. And if you have uh, fermions on different sites, you pay a cost of V in energy. Okay? So and from the outset, and of course, there are other terms here that are left behind, some uh, uh, correlated hopping and things like that that uh, have been proposed in different instances. So what I'd like to call your attention is that, in principle, you can simple arguments. If you think of the atomic limit, which is the, there's no hopping, you just put your particles on the sites and you look at count the energy. So the antiferromagnetic energy for this configuration, I draw here uh, a one-dimensional lattice, but you can think of a two-dimensional lattice or a hypercubic lattice with Z neighbors. And the, the antiferromagnetic energy is Z over 2 and V. And the other configuration, which we call charge density wave, where you pile two uh, fermions on the same site. And this energy costs this. And you see that uh, the energy of the charge density wave state is smaller than the antiferromagnetic state if V is greater than U over Z. So this means that you have a competition already in the Coulomb regime where the, the, the interactions are positive. Oops. Allow recording, I suppose. Uh, so this problem has been uh, studied for many, many years. And uh, somewhat the current vision of what happens is that the situation is a bit uh, uh, more uh, complicated than the strong coupling or the atomic limit. And you have a spin density wave here regime, and you have that charge density wave. But be between these two phases, you have a sort of a dimerized phase 
in which you go from a spin density wave, which is a, a charge gap and a, a spin gapless, and you have a spin gapped here in this bond order wave, and then you have you go into the charge density wave. So this is more or less a consensual, and uh, there was a big discussion on the nature of the critical points, to try, try critical point and so on, but uh, this is too much for us at the moment. And I'd just like to call your attention for the quarter field case, which is somewhat uh, not so well studied, and you have a, a, the, the charge density wave moves here. This is the, more or less the same parameters as here, but this is a quarter field. And you have a, a metal insulator transition and some indication of superconductivity right in this uh, rep a repulsive quadrant. Okay? So if you now allow for attractive interactions, then what you get is that you get here the, the U and V, the charge density wave is uh, still the most stable phase in here, and then you have a singlet superconducting here in this regime, which is the both U and V negative, and then in one dimension you get a triplet superconductivity, and beyond that you get a phase separated phase in which you get uh, uh, the fermions piling up all together in part of the lattice. Okay? So this is one dimension, and what happens in, if you include, uh, if you look at higher dimensions, for instance, the two dimension, the two dimensional case, uh, the, in two dimensions, you believe the, the, the attractive Hubbard model contains some very interesting physics. And for instance, the weak coupling is the BCS limit. So you can use this model to study the BCS, Bose-Einstein condensation crossover. And uh, so you can understand a lot of what's going on. If you look at the, if you have some uh, simulations, and you can have different energy scales, so different temperature scales. The red curve marks the critical temperature, and the, the blue curve is the pairing uh, temperature in which the, one of the features of the attractive Hubbard model is that you get your pairs being formed at a temperature higher than Tc, and then these pairs condense at a different temperature. So you go from one regime to the other, and you can uh, compare now with some realizations, which is the ultra-cold atoms. The, you can put fermionic atoms, neutral atoms, so we're talking not about superconductivity, but superfluidity. And if you look at the temperature uh, interaction strength phase diagram, you can go by controlling the uh, uh, an external field and control the, the Feshbach resonances, you can go from attractive to repulsive interactions. So this is a, a fine laboratory to test the ideas for the, the attractive Herbert model and vice versa. So uh, one of the features of uh, ultra-cold atoms is that you can visualize what's going on. You can do a lot of imaging and you can, you can measure double occupancies, signal occupancies, so it gives you an extra view of what's going on. So, if you, now if you stick to the, the attractive case, you can also wonder whether you could see all these theoretical predictions, but the point is that you, the experiments are here in this scale of temperature over T, you're working on this scale, whereas the critical points are all uh, further down. So hopefully one can increase by changing the uh, symmetries of the Hamiltonian, include other further hoppings and other features, trying to push this up. So then we wonder, what's the point, and can we have realizations of 
the attractive regime in the extended Hubble model. And uh, so we have some proposals here. Well, one is an experiment in one dimension where with the BISCO in which you lay on, on the, on the uh, BISCO film on the, on the substrate and you separate uh, chains, different chains would have a twin boundary between chains and you can uh, measure, do a lot of measurements of ARPIS on this compound. And they found uh, an attractive interaction here. So there's some condensed matter, uh, solid state uh, realization. And another one is to go back to a, an original uh, proposal by Scalapino, uh, in which the, if you take into account the antiferromagnetic fluctuations, you get a peak in the, in the antiferromagnetic wave vector. And if you Fourier transform this back into the uh, real space, you get the uh, a Hubbard model in which you have a dominating uh, uh, on-site attraction, but uh, uh, on-site repulsion, but you also get a first neighbor attraction. So there are these two possibilities. So one can start looking at uh, different uh, views on the uh, recent attempts for the two-dimensional case. Well, it's, it's very similar to the one-dimensional case. You have an antiferromagnetic phase here, a charge density wave, and you have phase separation. And these proposals, you have uh, D-wave superconductivity, S-wave superconductivity, and you need that for the cuprates. And, uh, but this was carried out with a projector quantum Monte Carlo, so the only data they actually have is within these gray shaded area in, because they, they, uh, they run into the problems with the minus sign. Another possibility is weak coupling functional renormalization group and in which you get uh, some peculiarities of this, but then you are restricted to a uh, 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 restricted uh, uh, values of uh, couplings. And we can also try uh, launchers on a 4 by 4 lattice, and you get uh, uh, similar stuff, and you have a, a, a P wave, they predict a P wave state, which is very surprising. So, because of that, there's no consensus on the pairing state in the attractive regime, so it's worth a thorough uh, determinant quantum Monte Carlo approach and see what we can get. However, let me go into the uh, highlights of uh, Monte Carlo. Uh, so you prepare the Hamiltonian in a sense that you have terms. This is written just without the 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 V term, the, the extended Hubbard model term, but this is, the, 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 the steps are roughly the same. So what happens is that you separate this, you have a non-commuting terms, so you use a trotter decomposition, so you have uh, these terms in uh, one of the delta tau terms, and you use this uh, decomposition, and you leave behind some terms, and this defines the temperature. So the temperature it, it gives you an extra dimension, and we have you still have two uh, two body terms into bi you need to change them into bilinear forms. So you prepare a Hubbard Stratonovich transformation, and this is where we start to differ strongly from the. Uh, usual Hubbard model, because now in the usual Hubbard model, what you do, you, have, you introduce auxiliary fields on each side. But because of this coupling between the, between the different sites, or the, or the first neighbor Coulomb term, you have to introduce four extra fields on each bond that you have. So it increases a lot of the work, 
and but you still have uh, rising degrees of freedom, freedom that should be sampled by uh, the usual Monte Carlo method. Okay, and this is where we get to the to the main point. The, you have a the product of two determinants that you can't guarantee that is positive definite, like uh, should be a Boltzmann factor. So you tend to uh, be away from this minus sign problem because th let me show you what happens. Whoops. So what's the minus sign problem? You do the Hubbard-Stratonovich com uh, configurations. You have the Boltzmann weight, which is the product of two determinants. The sign of the weight is defined by this ratio here. And you force a positive weight. So you take the magnitude of this Boltzmann weight. And then when you calculate averages, don't, f don't bother about the, the intermediate steps. It turns out that if you, the average value of any observable is given by the sine times the, aver the, 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 the average of the sine times the observable in this new ensemble of the uh, magnitude divided by the, min the s average sine. Okay, so when the average sign is much less than one, this average is very noisy. And this is what you get, for instance, uh, this is the normal, the usual Hubble model. You have here an example of fixed, uh, fixed U and different temperatures. You see that it degrades, the sign degrades steadily. And uh, if you go from one size, lattice size to another, it still degrades, there's no correction there. If you even go to three dimensions, you're in deeper trouble because the minima are in different densities. So for instance, if you increase u, you also decrease, the, this is the log of the sign, you also decrease the sign. So you're in, in bad business here, or in principle, you were. So lots of energy have been uh, dedicated to defeat the minus sign problem over the years. So many theories, many attempts, but uh, none of them very uh, fruitful. So the conventional wisdom says, okay, stay away from situations where the minus sign bothers you, okay? Uh, however, there's an alternative approach, which is keep your friends close, but your enemies closer, right? So what you do is look at the face the problem. So this is a, a very, very interesting paper published in, in last year by Hube Mondaini and uh, Starat and Scalata. Hube Mondaini was a, a student in our group, was Teresa Piva's student. And uh, so what they looked is that, let's see if you can look at critical points, use the minus sign to locate critical points. And what happened is that they plotted here the temperature as a function of chemical potential, or equivalently, the temperature as a function of density. This is the, the Hubbard model. And uh, here they, they plot the difference between the D-wave pairing uh, uh, correlation function, and uh, they see that the, they track the minus sign, you see the minus sign gets worse in the red area. So the quantum critical point can be located in, uh, in uh, if you examine the sign as an additional, uh, uh, as an additional observable. So because of that, you can think of, for those of you who have seen this film, and especially the subtitle, which is how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. You can replace this for the minus sign. And uh, so let's use the minus sign to our benefit. So we started doing the, the QMC simulations for the two-dimensional Hubbard model, extended Hubbard model. So let's look at the minus sign first. So this is a U equals 4, and we plot here the temperature as a function of V, and we plot uh, it's a, a contour plot of the 
sign. So you see that the sign gets worse as you, the temperature goes down exactly at the critical point. The cri remember the, the, the idea that v critical V is uh, U over, over Z. So it should be U over 4, and then you, give, you get 1. So in the complete uh, space, UV, the, the, my, the worst areas are the ones in red. And the blue ones are where the sign is 1. So you, s you can see that on the one hand, you get the transitions that you're looking for are exactly in when the minus sign is, is worse. So let's see how we can put all this together and see if we can make sense out of it. So let's look at the first quadrant, which is here, the U and V positive. And here we plot the uh, structure factor, the antiferromagnetic structure factor, as a function of V for different, uh, at a fixed temperature and for different lattice sizes. And we see that you change the character. And we also have the, the charge density wave structure factor here. And you see that when one goes down, the other one goes up. And this is followed, this is tracked by the, the minus sign. So the minus sign has a dip exactly where these two change. OK, so this looks good. And uh, let's look at the second let's look at the second and third quadrants. As you recall, the, the second is all charge density wave, a ground state, uh, whereas the, this uh, third quadrant, you have phase separation, you have superconductivity, and we want to see the transition to these phases. So it's a bit messy, but I'll, I'll guide you through the, the data. So here is V, and you go from this is V positive, and you want to reach V equals zero, which is exactly here. So you see that the dominant uh, structure factor here is the charge density wave. As soon as you cross here, this we cross zero, as expected, you, you have superconducting correlations. The, these are the uh, superconducting uh, structure fa factor. Uh, as soon as you cross here, you find the, the superconductivity correlations increasing. And again, you lower the temperatures, they, they get more and more intense. And if you carry on uh, decreasing V, you reach this region where you get phase separation. Okay, So all these uh, correlations uh, show no intensity at all. And it, now let's look at the minus sign, what happens. The minus sign, as you, cro you, you come here, you have the, you know, that there's no minus sign in the, the, the Hubbard model, the attractive Hubbard model. So as soon as you get here, you, ha you find a dip in the sign. And it, so it coincides with this increase in the correlations of the, of the structure of, of superconducting structure factor. And then as you move on, the sign picks up and goes back to 1. So this is helping us to understand that uh, you can locate the critical points by using the sign together with this uh, noisy data. Uh, if you Now you can change the, the magnitude of u, and you see that the dip moves towards the lowest values of v. And then when you reach this uh, phase-separated phase, what, how can you, we characterize and, and make sure that it is? You can do a, a, a histogram of the occupation. And you see that as you move towards to the left, the, the peak that, the, that you, you found at, uh, at half filling here, at, at one, uh, density 1, moves and suddenly opens, and this is what characterizes phase separation. You either have unoccupied sites or doubly occupied sites. So uh, the, it looks promising, and we can 
carry on and examine the superconducting the f the superconducting correlations again and see if we find a change in the character of the pairing so you can now we look at susceptibilities that which is provide a finer uh, measure and you here we plot the difference between the pairing uh, the super the superconductive uh, 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 susceptibility, the difference between them, and we, the, when it gets to zero, you change from S D, for S wave to D wave. And uh, so these are the symmetries for you to understand. Uh, the, these are the form factors that come here. So we find a, a transition between S, S wave and D wave, and P wave here is hardly noticeable. And uh, so the fourth quadrant is uh, interesting because that's where the, some people have predicted the presence of a P wave superconductivity. And so we do the same story. We plot here the antiferromagnetic correlation. Remember, we have uh, in one dimension, we have a, a transition between uh, a, a, an anti uh, spin density wave and a superconducting. And further down, you have uh, the, the, the phase separation. So this is what we're looking for. So we look at the antiferromagnetic correlations, and we see that we find two regimes as the temperature decreases. One in which, the, as the temperature decreases, the, the, the correlation function increases, whereas the other, in this regime, when you have superconductivity, or uh, supposedly the they are suppressed. The antiferromagnetic correlations are suppressed, and then you went to the phase separated region where they, there's no dependence with the temperature. So this is followed exactly by the minus sign, and you can see that the, the minus sign dips strongly at the, this transition, and then it starts picking up, but then it meets the phase separation region, and then it uh, dips again, and then further down, it, it, it grows up again. So this uh, is uh, similar to the superconducting. Now we compare the, the, the pairing correlation function with the, for, for the P wave down here and the D wave, and we see that there's a slight dominance of the D wave here. But then we have to look at the, do a finer treatment of this, look at the, the, the temperature dependence and the size dependence. So the suspicion is that the size it plays an important role here. Uh, for L equals 4, the P wave is degenerate with the, the, the D wave. But as you increase the size of the system, as the temperature gets lower, it, in the end, the, the the D wave prevails. And we also looked at the susceptibility, not just the correlation function, and we see for a, for a larger system, and we see that there's no doubt that the, there's no prevalence of, of the P wave state. So we summarize our findings in this uh, uh, phase diagram in which I believe for the first time you put real arrow bars and points in here, and you can get all the phases that are similar to one dimension, but with the difference that you have S wave and D wave here. So to conclude, uh, the use of the average sign as an additional observable allows you to locate critical points, and uh, uh, we believe that the reason, the one point that I didn't call your attention is that there's no indication of a sign between these two phases here. And we believe that the sign only manifests itself when, uh, as a dip when you change universality classes. Here you have a, a, a three component order parameter, here you have a one component order parameter, and all here you have a two component order parameter. So uh, we believe that. The, the, the minus sign can help you get through uh, only when you have uh, different universality classes at, at stake. 
small diameter ferromagnetic CD double transition is similar to 1D, and uh, only S and D wave and not P wave are stabilized, and so which is compatible with the coup rates. And uh, this is the reference to the preprint. And uh, so the outlook, we, we at the moment we're carrying out uh, quarter field simulations to see how that phase diagram, if it changes at all, in two dimensions. And we're looking at finite temperature transitions. And one uh, idea is to induce P wave pairing through near near neighbor hopping, uh, because the, then you break uh, nesting, which seems to be uh, uh, goes going against the D wave, uh, the P wave's uh, superconductivity. With this, uh, thank you. So, questions? So, uh, hi, Mundo. So, you, you, I, if I remember, this is for the square lattice, right? Yeah, square lattice. So, yeah. I, I, I believe that for weak coupling, there is a critical value of V where you should get a G wave, uh, which is uh, has uh, eight nodes instead of uh, just four. Did you ever, did you ever look for that? No, or? no, no. It's too. It's too too hard. This one, I, I guess, it's too hard. But it, it's doable. But uh, we were just trying to get the main the main candidates here. But but in principle, it's just oh yeah, it's just a question right? of testing and comparing right. all the all the susceptibilities and correlation functions. I don't know. And I don't think so. Four by no, but you don't do four by four. You do you go up to ten. 10 by 10. When I say 10, is 10 by 10. And, and then the follow-up question is, you said that there's no sign problem between the S and D, right? When you go from the no, S... No, no, what I, what I meant was that uh, or it's there's not no bad. dip. Yeah. There's no uh, noticeable dip that uh, would, would uh, 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 characterize the transition. So, so it's, it's pretty... Uh, uh, e it's more straightforward to access because the sign problem doesn't get it. You can go to lower temperatures, as Yeah. So then I'm curious, um, when you go from S to D, you could have like a first order transition, which probably is more likely, but you could have an, a coexistence phase of like S plus ID or S plus D, and they yeah. would break extra yeah. symmetries? We, we haven't tested that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We haven't tested for that. We just took the main ones and sure. just for uh, proof of principle. Uh, so, just a simple question. Uh, I was a little bit confused about the, uh, the the concept. So clearly, you have shown for certain uh, uh, tr transition that has different universality. Suddenly, you expect a very strong sign problem. There is a dip. So I, I'm just a little bit uh, concerned about the logic. Is it true that whenever you see a very serious sign problem like a dip? It necessarily guaranteed a phase transition, uh, no, or is the other way around? No, no, no. Is that no? When you have such a phase yeah, transition, yeah. you do expect to see yeah, the sign problem, yeah. right? You need you need other you need other uh, uh, witnesses, not just a minus sign. Okay, good. You need, you need the the response functions because these are the ones that would give you the physics. Right, right, right. Okay, very good. Another question related to the first question is. Uh, I remember there were a lot of debate uh, about 10 years ago uh, among the expert who does different numerical calculation with different approach on uh, whether there is indeed uh, superconductivity in a 2D uh, uh, Hubble model. That was a very big, serious attempt in uh, the Fly Iron Institute, and many people were really working very hard. Well, but I don't get the impression that it was there is a consensus that there will be a D wave superconductivity or not. Uh, but your presentation seems to suggest that this is now pretty much settled. Is that the current status of the field or uh, no? The 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 main debate was whether you could get D wave just with the Hubbard U. Okay, that was the main point. Here I added another term which favors the appearance of a D wave phase. It's different. But I, if I remember in your result, you also, can, you also explore V equal to zero limit, right? You have a very complete exploration. Yeah. 
And even there, you get, uh, I guess, then in that case, only yeah. the negative U show uh, S wave, right? Yeah. Is that? No, no. The negative U, uh, the repulsive Hubbard is on this side, okay? But in order to get the, to a D wave, you need a negative V. I see, I see. Okay, so that's the, that's that, the that's new the, thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is just half filling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is half filling, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, doping, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Perhaps when Dudu gets uh, 61, we'll discuss this, hopefully. More questions? Okay, if not, I'll continue. Vlad. Oh, Vlad. So this is uh, striking and very beautiful how this noise, how the sign problem tracks these transitions. But is there an intuitive, can you, can you give a heuristic arguments why is this sign problem tracking so much quantum criticality? Is this, is this something that one can you know, understand intuitively? No, we, we don't answer. We have, we have one argument uh, who says, or Richard, Richard Scalater's argument, that uh, if you divide by, by the average sign, you're taking all the, the, the non-analyticities non with it. But uh, I don't know if we can make such a strong argument. But it's, it's amazing. So can I do a yeah, comment? Yeah, you have a comment. So the, the, the point is that y if you have a critical point, your... Uh, the singularity. Yes, you have a singularity. So your partition function is not, is, is not, is not analytic anymore at the point, in the point. So uh, in, some, in some point, your non-analyticity should be at the sign. So this should reflect. In fact, in this paper of Rube Mondaini, they showed that the sign has the same um, uh, universality class of the phase transition. So if you perform such a, how can I say, uh, data collapse of the sign for different lattice size, you have the same critical exponents of the transitions. This is, this is amazing. Uh, so, I mean, you use the average sign, but uh, can you use other features of the distribution, uh, like the the fluctuations of the sign, uh, S square? Never looked at it. S no, never looked at it because it's. Uh, yeah, no, we haven't examined that. And the distribution looks like a semicircular. Is it? Uh, did I see Which it one? right? Uh, the P of S. No, that was not P of S. That's P of N, of the, like the occupation. The paper was P of S, or P no, no, that was a, a superconducting correlation function. Mm -hmm. Ah, that was okay. Yeah. So it was, was not it? P of no, S. No, 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 not a distribution. P of S is it strange, or yeah. it's a well-behaved uh, distribution function. The, uh, you don't know the P of we S. We don't know. We don't. Uh, we don't never know. examined it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. A quick question: Aren't all these transitions? Expect it to be first order? Um, yeah, well, you, this one in one dimension was. Uh, I mean, they're, they're all different symmetries. Yeah, they all they have different symmetries at t so equals zero. Yeah. You'd expect first order yeah. transitions between yeah. them. And, and I understood that the sign uh, signature is connected to criticality. criticality. Yeah, exactly. But if it's first order, it's not critical. Yeah, but I don't know if you can uh, pin it to the to the order of the transition. Okay. It's not clear. Okay, so let's thank the speaker okay, again. Thank you.